I spend a lot of time in the terminal, and because of that, I like to try out new terminal emulators, And but there's not that many terminal emulators out there that I haven't played with before. But the other day I came across one that I never really gave a chance, and I see it all the time. A lot of times I review these KDE Plasma distributions on the channel. I do these uh, first look impression kind of videos where I'll take a look at a distribution. And typically in these KDE Plasma distros, they have two terminal emulators installed. So if I switch over to this VM here, this is a VM of Seduction, which is a Debian-based Linux distribution. They have a really nice KDE Plasma distribution. And by default, you have console with a K. I didn't need the caps lock on there, but console with a K is Plasma's terminal. And it's a really nice terminal emulator. If I was using Plasma, I would not swap this out with anything else. Really nice terminal, but typically you also have a second terminal emulator installed on the system called Yaquake, which is a strange name. Most people, when they see that, they're not even going to have any clue how to pronounce it. Is that Yaquake, Yaquake, Yakuwaki? I mean, what the heck is that? Like, whoever came up with that name, they really should have put more thought into that. But hey, it is what it is. Yaquake, the name, it's because it is inspired by the old Quake game. Those of you that played Quake, remember in game it had a drop down terminal that you could get. Well, that's what Yaquake is. When I just launched Yaquake, you notice I didn't get a terminal emulator up here. It's running, but by default, Yaquake, you toggle it to show and hide with F12 on the keyboard. So if I hit F12, you see I get this Quake style drop down terminal. And if I hit F12 again, it'll go away. Now, I've played a, a little bit with Yaquake here in the last couple of days, and I gotta say, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this terminal emulator. One of the cool things about Yaquake is it's, it's actually built on console. So if you install Yaquake, you have to install console with a K because it's basically console just modified in a way where we have this this drop down effect. And of course, you can change the size and, and where it appears on the screen. It doesn't always have to drop down from the top and it doesn't always have to be this exact size. You can adjust the size. I mean, I could adjust the size with the mouse if I wanted to. Uh, also, you have the ability to do some scripting with Yaquake. You can launch it through a startup script and you can specify exactly how it starts up. You can specify how many tabs it opens, uh, what a appears on each tab. It's, it's got some really neat capabilities. Now I mentioned that it's built upon KDE's console and it really once you get into the like the menu system and go to manage profiles you'll notice you have the same profiles in both Yaquake and in KDE's console. If I go to configure Yaquake I mean all the uh, settings and everything look like the kinds of settings that you set in, in console. Yaquake does have tabs built in by default. You see right now we only have the one tab open and it's just called shell. I could add another one and we have shell number two. Let me launch something on this so that we can tell the difference. So there's shell one, shell two with htop. I'll launch an another one. Let's just run a ls command just to have something else on the screen. Let's do it in long format. There we go. And uh, you have keyboard shortcuts so you can move through the tabs with the keyboard. You don't have to use the mouse. You can also close tabs with the keyboard. Shift and the arrow keys will move you from tab to tab. So right now I'm on the far right tab, shell number three. If I do shift and then the left arrow key, I move to the shell number two tab. And if I do it one more time, I move to the first tab. And of course, shift right moves you back to the right. And if you want to actually move the tabs as far as the order that they're in, do control shift and then left and right. So if I do control shift left here, I will actually move the third tab to the second spot and to the first spot. And if I go right with control shift, move it back to the second spot, and then I finally move it back to the third spot. And I believe control shift D closes the tab. It does. I had to think about that. Uh, some of the documentation as far as the default key bindings is a little sketchy. Um, Yaquake does have a man page. Let me go to the first tab. But I don't believe that the man page actually gives you, actually it doesn't even have a man page. So that was one of the reasons I was having trouble finding some of the key bindings. Does it have like a uh, a help flag? So if I give it dash dash help, yeah, but there's no information here. So that's one of the unfortunate things about Yaquake is just you don't have 
you know, a help flag and you don't have a man page as far as built into the distribution. Y'all obviously you can go online. Yawquake does have a website. Of course, it's a KDE program. So you can go to KDE's website and get information about it. Also, there is a really nice page about Yawquake in the Arch Wiki. And the Arch Wiki page is really neat because it includes right here, Yawquake scripting, and it includes like a uh, test script here. For those of you that want to uh, play around with the scripting, and what I did is I took, uh, I, th I think I took the top part here, which launches Yawquake with two splits, actually two tabs, and it launches, I think, HTOP on a tab or on a split. I can't remember if I did splits or tabs, but let me show you this back in the VM here. So I'm going to close Yawquake. Let's go ahead and quit out of it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open KDE's console. And if I do a LS... You see, I created this script here called yak.sh. Now let me open this in film so you guys can read it. And yeah, it's a very simple script. Again, it's just mainly the first few paragraphs I got from the Arch Wiki. It's going to start HTOP in a tab and split to user terminal and run IOTOP. So that comment actually tells us exactly what's going to happen. Now, let me make this smaller and get it out of the way. And let me now start Yawquake using our startup script. And we've got a syntax error here, unexpected EOF while looking for. All right, so line 16, let's go ahead and take a look at line 16 and line 17. And I can already see the error here on the very last line. You see IOTOP. I have a quote here, but it needs one more quote, of course, at the end of the line. So let me write and quit that. And then let's try that one more time. And let's launch Yawquake using the startup script. All right, we started it, but of course it doesn't appear on camera <laughs> or on screen until I do the F12. And now you can see what my startup script does. It starts uh, basically three splits. It puts HTOP in one, it just puts a terminal, a just an empty terminal here and then I don't know why this terminal this terminal was going to start IOTOP but the command is not available it doesn't look like maybe it's not installed but anyway this was not uh, supposed to be a functioning script again that was just the example script that I got from the Arch Wiki so some really neat little functionality with Yawquake the fact that you can actually have it start with certain tabs and splits already open running certain programs I think is one of the really neat features with it and I can understand you know people have wanted me to take a look at some of these drop down terminals before and I've always been kind of resistant because I didn't see the point. Why, why do I want this terminal that just appears when I hit F12 and then goes away? Because typically when I'm in a terminal, I'm in it for the long haul. I just, I'm just going to open it up on one of my workspaces and it's always going to be there. But as some of the other features with these terminals that are nice, like I, I didn't expect Yawquake to have tabbing and, and all this scripting capability. Like I really thought it was going to be a much simpler program. Now me as a tiling window manager user, I really don't have a use for as far as needing something that has that drop down capability because in tiling window managers, most of them have what they call scratch pads where you can have a program that is always available for you as far as show hide. You have a key binding to toggle a program show and hide. So I can open up a terminal as a scratch pad, and when I'm done with it, hit the key binding to hide it. It's still running. You know, all my information is still there, but then I hit another key and my terminal can come back. But if I wasn't on a tiling window manager that had that scratch pad capability, then I could see where something like Yawquake would come in handy. And I know, you know, millions of people out there run KDE Plasma. It's a very popular desktop environment. And, you know, it's actually not bad. I mean, I could use it. <laughs> like if you forced me to use Plasma, you know, I could get by with it. And to be honest, if I was a Plasma user, I would probably use Yakwake. So that was just a very quick look at Yawquake. It's a program I don't think probably gets a lot of attention. It's not a program I hear about all the time. And just playing around with it here in the last couple of days, it impressed me enough that I thought I should do something about it on camera. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. I need to thank Absy, Dallas, Gabe, Lou, Mitchell, Alan, Akami, Arch5530, Chuck, David, The Other David, Dylan, Gregory, Lewis, Paul, Scott, Wes, and Willie. They are the producers of this episode. These guys... They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This great episode that you just watched, it wouldn't have been possible. 
The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because the DistroTube channel has no corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you'd like to help me out, please consider supporting me over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. It's a great terminal, but man, that name sucks.